there's a very simple answer to the question, why am I addicted to cheese? There's actually an addictive substance in dairy meant to make you addicted to it. It's put there on purpose uh, by the maker of the milk to get you addicted and keep you addicted. Uh, there's biological reasons why this is a good thing, but if you're trying to lose weight and improve your health, this can stall your weight loss and your health improvement. Hi, I'm Dr. Barry and I'm a cheese addict. I have to greatly limit my dairy intake because I am absolutely addicted to the addictive substance that occurs in all dairy, but it occurs much more in some forms of dairy than in other forms of dairy. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the list from least addictive to most addictive so that you can make dietary choices based on that. So what is this addictive substance in milk? It's called casomorphins. And it's an opioid-like peptide that's actually put into the milk by the maker of the milk, AKA the mother who produced the milk, to encourage her offspring to drink lots of milk because milk, unlike any other substance on the planet, encourages fast growth and development. And so a baby mammal wants to grow and gain weight as quickly as possible. But many of us adults do not want to gain weight as quickly as possible. Now, if you're on a low carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet, you may be including lots of full fat dairy in your dietary options, in your choices, because of the macro content. It's typically very low in carbohydrate and much higher in protein and fat, both of which are good on keto or carnivore. But the problem is, is what we're trying to do by eating a proper human diet is to just eat less total food overall, but also not be starving at the same time, and also not be craving the food at the same time. Now, many people don't even know that there's a habit-forming substance in dairy. And so this may be the first time you've ever heard of casomorphin. So I'm going to go into a little detail and kind of explain what these things are, why you should care, and then tell you which dairy options have the least of these addictive molecules so that you can still enjoy some dairy and also get the, the very excellent protein and fat from them because you need both of those very much and all the vitamins and minerals that come from dairy. But you don't want to get the sugar, the lactose, obviously. You're trying to cut that down, but you also don't want to get cheese or dairy with too much casomorphin in it because it's going to make you addicted and then you're going to crave more and you'll wind up eating more total food. You'll wind up overeating your satiety. So when you've eaten enough food, your satiety hormones kick off. They, they elevate and say, hey, you're full. That's enough. But if you're not truly hungry, what actually is happening is you're craving the casomorphin fix, then you'll wind up eating too much total food. You'll overeat your satiety, your, your fullness, and that will not help you to lose the fat. So casomorphins are opioid-like peptides. Uh, so when you eat or drink dairy, there's a lot of casein in that. And there's more in some forms of dairy than in other forms of dairy. Uh, this casein is broken down in your gut and your intestines by different uh, peptides that break it down. And some of this leads to the formation of casomorphins. Now, it has opioid-like activity. It actually um, fits in the mu opioid receptor. And so this is going to stimulate your opioid receptors, which is going to give you a feeling of, of relaxation, and pleasure, pleasurableness. It can actually even reduce pain. We see this in infants who are given milk uh, right before a painful procedure. It can also uh, stimulate your reward center so that you seek it more in the future, and therefore it can be addictive in some people. Now, how exactly can casomorphins in dairy be addictive? So they, they bind to these same mu receptors and they trigger your brain's reward system. And this stimulates the release of dopamine, which is one of the neurotransmitters you've heard of before that gives you feelings of pleasure and also reinforces the behavior that gave you that feeling of pleasure. Now, there are much higher concentrations of casomorphins in some. Hard cheeses is one example, but I'm gonna give you the full list at the end of this video. And so in some cases, turning liquid dairy into cheese actually concentrates 
the casomorphins. And so there are some dairy that's quite low in casomorphins and other dairy which is much, much higher. And so if you look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a cheese addict, I'm a dairy addict, I really, it calls to me, I can't help it, then you need to know the list of things that give you this reward cycle, uh, crave, eat, get the reward, then crave again. You want to break that cycle if you're trying to realize your ultimate health. So now that you know that casomorphins exist and you know what they are and you kind of know how they work, here's the list of dairy. And this is ranked from least casomorphin to most casomorphin. So if you are a dairy addict, a cheese addict like me, that's okay. You're in good company. You need to know this list. And what you need to do is make choices from the top of this list and avoid the things at the bottom of this list. And so number one and number two with the least casomorphin is ghee and butter because they're just the fat component. Uh, ghee is 100% the fat component. The butter has just a little bit of the protein solid, so maybe some casein, so therefore a tiny, tiny bit of casomorphin. Heavy cream is next on the list, then half and half. And you can see as we get less fat, we're going to get more casein, therefore more casomorphins. And then yogurt, uh, Greek yogurt and regular yogurt, you want to get full fat. That way you're not going to get quite as much if you choose yogurt as an option, but you're still going to get some. All the soft cheeses come next. They, they haven't been aged quite as long, and so therefore they don't concentrate the casomorphins quite as much. And then actually A2 milk has less casomorphin in it on average than A1 milk. Cottage cheese is next, then A1 milk. 2% uh, A1 is going to have a little bit higher casomorphin because you've taken out some of the fat. Skim is going to have a tiny bit more because you took out all the fat. And then the hard cheeses. Now, full, fully fermented hard cheese is something I've recommended to people on Keto and Carnivore for years because of the macronutrient content. Because all of the lactose has been eaten up by the, by the microbes, right? But that actually concentrates the casomorphin content. And so if you're a cheese addict, then fully fermented hard cheeses like cheddar and Parmesan, uh, they, they can be a problem. If you're addicted to this and you really respond to the casomorphins, then you're quite likely to overeat these cheeses past the point where you're, you're satiated, you're full, and you're eating extra unnecessary food. Uh, then a, a casein protein isolate, this is something that you probably wouldn't ingest. And then finally on the list, the most concentrated are the, the ultra-processed dairy products like the Velveeta cheese and all the Franken cheeses out there. They can be super high in these casomorphins because these food manufacturers, they want you to be addicted to their products. So they're going to make sure that their processed dairy uh, products are super high in casomorphins so they can keep you coming back. So when it comes to dairy, you definitely worry about the macronutrient count, the fat, the protein, the carbohydrates, but you also got to worry about the casomorphin content. And this is why for a lot of people, if they're eating a lot of cheese on their keto diet or carnivore diet, they may not be getting the weight loss that they're looking for. They may not be getting the reduction in inflammation they're looking for because they're eating too much of this dairy protein that breaks down into casomorphin. Hope this video helps. If you know a fellow cheese addict like you and me, please share this video with them. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.